Here we go, I'm about to step into the sun. It's like 35 degrees out. It's like day five or something, but uh, this video is gonna take place over a couple days. Um, I wanted to talk about bridges, bridges over the Yangtze. Um, this beautiful thing here, I just asked the girl what it was called and she said it was called the Changjiang, which is the name of the river. So I don't know if that's the name of it. It's not the name of it. It's, I think it's called the Badong Changjiang uh, Bridge. So I'm in Badong and it makes sense to name it after the town. Big, long bridge here. It's pretty impressive. Not the longest bridge on Yangtze by far, but still a nice bridge. There are so many bridges across the Yangtze. There has to be because the river stretches across all of China. To break that divide between the north and the south is such a huge, huge deal for the country. It's so hard to build a bridge across the Yangtze because there's so much traffic going up and down it. You can't just stop the traffic. They won't cut off traffic for more than a few hours. They just won't do it because so many people would lose money. Um, so there's that and there's also the soil. Um, it's very muddy, a very muddy river and it's hard to like get the foundation built because there's so much mud. So it's pretty amazing what they've been able to do considering those factors. Let's fast forward to day eight and go to the bridge that I'm most excited about on the Yangtze. Shaking in the bed, baking on my head. We gon' go and just raking all the checks. Live filter, we pretend we intercess. On the internet, we off it in a sec. That's the first step. Now it's all about the execution. I am about to go and lose it. Grab the shit and go bruise it. Currently taking a ferry across the Yangtze in Zhenjiang. Uh, this is definitely not the most convenient way to cross the river at this point. Uh, that would be this big guy here, Runyang Bridge, one of the largest bridges in the world. So the Runyang Bridge is a total of 35.66 kilometers, uh, but it's made up of two bridges, the North Bridge, the South Bridge, and then an elevated roadway between the two. Okay, Bridge Building 101. When building bridges across the Yangtze, they usually use one of two kinds, a cable state bridge or a suspension bridge. This is a good place to learn the difference between the two because over here we have a cable state bridge and on the south side we have a, a suspension bridge. You can tell the difference between the two because of the arching lines. That's a suspension bridge and then the lines that are straight, that's a cable state bridge. Basically the cables are attached from the tower to the roadway and on this one the cables are attached to the, the looping cable. So the cables run from the land up to the towers and then back to the other side of the land. And then smaller cables are attached to that cable that droops. This ferry ride I was so excited about. I didn't even know that you could take a ferry, uh, but I saw it on the map and I went, went down here and uh, I saw a ticket booth, I bought a ticket. I just walked onto the ferry. Hello. Hello. Uh, where come? Uh, from Canada. Uh, where do you come from? Canada. Okay. Let's get into some details about this south bridge because it really is an engineering marvel. It's, it's incredible. The span, the area between the two towers, is almost a kilometer and a half. They could have built another tower, but um, they wanted to like, free up the space because there's a ton of traffic, as you can see. All kinds of boats coming up and down the river at this point. They use 360 suspender cables. The cables that go from a big cable down, there's 360 of them. This is the South Tower. It's the equivalent of a 70-story building. It's huge, it's so tall. You can see the cables run up on the top of it. Um, there's a casing on top, but they're kind of just like laid over top of it, which helps the bridge stay flexible. So if the wind blows it, if the traffic's rumbling, it'll you know shake with it, and it'll it, it's safer. It, it, it'll last longer because it's not solid. That being said, the cables go all the way down to this anchor point here now that anchor point that has to be solid it can't move they have to be able to withstand 68 million kilograms of force and so so the anchor blocks have to be super super strong they're actually 30 meters deep into the ground that's like a nine-story building just solid deep into the ground concrete and it was very difficult to build it because the, the soil is so muddy here so they would dig and then they'd hit pockets of water and the mud would come in the water would come in and like workers could you know, were risking their lives, they could drown. What they ended up doing is pretty awesome. They built this refrigeration system around where they wanted the block. So they would dig and the mud wouldn't come in because it would be frozen. They would froze the ground like in a circle and they just kept digging and the mud, the water wouldn't leak in because it was frozen. 
this was. Oh, these guys are taking a photo of me. Hey. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Probably the most difficult part of building the whole thing was hanging the cables, the suspension cables. Um, in total, each cable is 27 million kilograms, so super heavy. They're made up of a bunch of smaller cables, uh, enough to circle the earth three times. It took seven months of pulling cables across, seven months straight, 24 hours a day. And these workers were making about $200 a month working on top of those towers, pulling cables. The biggest enemy of a steel bridge like this is rust. So what they've done is the housing case where the cables are in, the big suspension cable, there's a housing case with all the small cables in it, and they built a dehumidifier system inside that housing case. So it's pumping dry air through the whole thing and just keeping the cables nice and dry so they don't rust. In total, the towers and the cables took three years to build. And then after that, they had to build the roadway which was actually, it only took nine months to do that. It's pretty amazing. Uh, what they did was they built a machine that could ride along the suspension cables and just lower the roadway into place. So it just would ride down the little arch thing, lower a road, move over, lower another road. Uh, I would have loved to see that. That would have been so cool to see. So in total, it took four and a half years. It cost 700 million USD, but it helped the city out a lot. In the next, 20 years, China plans to build 50 more bridges across the Yangtze. Um, I'm sure some of them will break records. They're probably the best bridge building nation in the world. <coughs> All right, I just walked five kilometers. Five kilometers through mainly industry. Five kilometers isn't that bad, but I'm actually sick. I got a cold the other day and uh, I just feel like garbage now coming close to the end. I'm actually headed to Shanghai today. I'm gonna to jump on a train to Shanghai and I'm gonna meet up with Sarah. I'm so happy about that. And um, then make a couple videos. Oh, here we go. I'm out of here. So stay tuned. Power quiet? Oh god, I feel like I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs>